Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. We have an indefinite integral of sine x cosine x over sine to the fourth x plus cosine to the fourth x dx. So just a little hint, if you want to try this on your own, I did a substitution. Two of them, actually. So let me rewrite the integrand, and maybe that'll help inspire you to see what would be a nice choice for substitution. I'm going to rewrite the denominator as sine squared x squared plus cosine squared x squared dx. Now, typically when we do u sub with trig functions, the rule is don't ever include the exponent, like just let u be sine x or just let u be cosine x. But this is an exception to that. I'm actually gonna go ahead and let u be sine squared x. And you'll see why in a minute. Remember, we can rewrite the exponent on the outside. We put it next to the n right here as like an abbreviation so we don't have to write parentheses. But when taking the derivative, it's helpful to put it out here because then you'll remember to do the chain rule more easily. So du equals, bring that exponent in the front, to sine x, cosine x dx. And you see how we have exactly that sitting up here pretty much just without the two. So we can fix that. One half du is sine x cosine x dx. Beautiful. So that whole term's accounted for. And then now I know, all right, down here, this is going to be u squared. Well, what about this cosine squared? Well, this is where we're going to use the Pythagorean identity and rewrite cosine squared as 1 minus sine squared. So we're almost ready to make our substitution. This is sine x cosine x over, I'm going to write this as sine squared x squared plus 1 minus sine squared x squared dx. Good? Okay. So then all of this here, sine x cosine x dx, that's going to get replaced with 1 half du. So let's do that. Let's put the 1 half outside for now. du is in the numerator. Okay, who's next? Sine squared x squared. So u is sine squared x. This is just going to be u squared. Plus, and then this term here is 1 minus u quantity squared. 1 minus u quantity squared. Take a second, marinate on it. Are you under control? We're good? Okay, fabulous. Now let's expand, clean up in the denominator, and then see how to proceed. So we've got here 1 half integral du over u squared plus 1 minus 2u plus u squared. Okay, so this is 1 half integral du over 2u squared minus 2u plus 1. And then I'm looking at the denominator. Okay, it's not factorable. So partial fractions is not the way to go. Typically, when something doesn't factor, our goal is to complete the square. And it's not going to be cute completing the square the way things are written just now. But if I take this little two that's sitting outside and distribute it through, it'll make things just a wee bit more friendly, okay? So we have integral du over, now I have 4u squared minus 4u plus two. And I like this better because 4u squared minus 4u plus one is a perfect square trinomial. And since I have plus 2, I'm just going to break it up into 1 plus 1. And then now this will all factor into 2u minus 1 quantity squared. And then I still have that plus 1. Can you see? Oh, that worked out very nicely for us. Okay, so here we go then. Integral du over, let me rewrite the denominator now as 2u minus 1 squared plus 1. All right. Fabulous. Now, depending where you're at in your calculus career, you may or may not need the second substitution. I'm going to go ahead and do it just in case you're still reviewing. But if you'll recall, 
We know the antiderivative of 1 over x squared plus a squared dx is 1 over a tan inverse x over a plus c. You can prove this a variety of ways, but it's not worth deriving every time you encounter it because it's such a common uh, integral that you'll see that you want to just recognize that it's going to be tan inverse. You just have to account for any constants here. So this is one you, you should put to memory. Now, I can see here this is a, right? a squared is 1. So a is 1. And then this is my variable quantity here. This is basically like my x. The only issue is since I have a coefficient on u, I would need to also divide by that coefficient here. And if that's just a little too aggressive right now, then I recommend doing another substitution. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Okay, so I'm going to let, let's let t equal 2u minus 1. Then dt is 2du. So 1 half dt is du. And then now let's go back to the integral. Let me rewrite it in terms of t. So we have 1 half dt in the numerator instead of du, right? And then all of this loveliness, 2u minus 1, that's just t. So then I have t squared plus 1. Does that look more friendly? So you have 1 half integral dt over t squared plus 1. And then maybe now you're less scared. You're like, oh, this is great. This is 1 half tan inverse of t plus c. So now's the time to put plus c. Then let's go back. That's 1 half tan inverse, and t was 2u minus 1. Now, normally, if I wasn't explaining this to anybody, I would have skipped all of this. Because when I'm looking at the integral in this form right here, I know that if I did the whole substitution, I'm basically doing it in my head. If there's just some constant in front of the variable, you end up dividing by it, right? You end up picking up a one half. So then you could just go to this form. A was one, and then you just have to add an extra one half in the front. And then this whole two U minus one, that's your X. Okay, if that totally confuses you, then just keep doing extra substitutions. And then in time, you'll, you'll notice the pattern and you can skip it. All right, and then we're not done because remember the original problem was in terms of x and we let u be sine squared x. So I have 2 sine squared x minus 1 plus c. And now we're done. So, whoa, what a peculiar shape. Let's get it together. Fab. So this is one method. There's actually another method um, that you could use to evaluate this integral and it involves dividing by cosine to the fourth of x I believe and the answer comes out it still involves tan inverse but it looks a little different if you're interested in seeing that method let me know I can also record this integral again with an alternate solution if you try something different besides this method or that other method that I'm describing let me know and I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I have full length video lectures for all topics in Calc 1, 2, 3, pre-Calc. I even have introductory statistics videos, some algebra. So you can just have a grand old time perusing through my channel. Also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Math with Professor V. More like fun stuff there. A little bit of a glimpse into my daily routine, teaching and whatnot. And I will be recording the solutions to exam three that Calc 2 just took on sequences and series in the next coming days. So make sure you also turn on your notifications. That way you know as soon as I upload. All right. Thank you guys so much for your support. Love you all. I'll be back sooner than later. Bye.